Millinery is, it's an art form. And I, I sometimes boldly say I'm an artist first and a designer second. Anything you put on your head immediately transforms us humans. It can make you feel so good on a day that you don't feel good about yourself. Part of uh, how I learned my skills was from deconstructing vintage hats that were all done in, here, in this country and that were superbly made. Everything was hand stitched. Y you take them apart and it's an incredible amount of work. I haven't slept since 1998 either, so I'm constantly researching, trying to source the products, and I try to be most mindful that I'm buying fabrics or whatever. I like to be very um, eco-minded about what I'm getting. I always want to bring at the focus of Made in America to my client. To be a sustainable business is, it's a lot of work and it's constant research. Tailoring is, to me, it applies to all fashion. You really have to perfect your and hone those skills or you're not going to be a great designer. You can draw the most beautiful gown, but can you bring the concept to life? You must understand the fundamentals of building anything from the inside out. I think that applies again to making the perfect hat. There's a lot of labour involved, it's very intensive. And I actually never sit when I'm working. So I stand at my workbench the whole day long and it's a lot of um, pulling and stretching and there's a lot of strength involved but there's also a lot of you know hand sewing and hand stitching everything i do is hand stitched it's from the workbench to the ironing board those are my two stations i'm constantly using steam and as do most milliners that's an integral part of the process of hat making so i'm constantly at heat and then at the workbench some of my work evolves as I'm designing and creating because some of them are very sculptural. So it's like, I don't know how the twist and turn is going to go. Then others are all up here in my head. I actually don't sketch. There isn't one sketch of any of my designs ever. It's all in this crazy head. The formula is worked out in my head. And sometimes it's about movement. So I might have to choreograph what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do it before I start working on the piece. You know, sometimes people might see me doing things like this. I have trouble doing the same thing twice, and I think that's why I also went down the millinery road, because I knew I could do one-of-a-kind designs. I find beauty in things that are just sort of slightly off-kilter. Nothing's ever even with me, or perfect on both sides. There's always a little quirky tilt. Celtic spiral work has always been very dominant in everything I do. I have to go back to Ireland at least once a year and absorb all of that from the windswept tree to the beautiful brick walls and the f oh God, when, when they say it's green, it's green. It's 40 shades of green. Without that, I don't even know if I'd be doing what I'm doing. It has such a, a marked effect on my creativity. Some of my favorite fabrics to work with are Cinema, Crin, also known as horsehair. I love Irish wool, Panama straw, and Paracecil. And of course, I can't live without millinery wire because I love how sculptural it can make a piece look. These are all very malleable fabrics and you're never quite sure what's going to come out of it. Cinema straw, it's very lightweight and you can make it very fine and the weave is very fine. You can layer it and make it more opaque. It's incredible. Crin is one of my favourites because it's a hard one to master, but I love distressing it. I love making it constructed looking and it's very soft and beautiful and light. I'm extremely sensitive to my clients' needs. I want them to be so happy and it's not about selling the most expensive hat to my client, it's about selling the right hat. That's what makes it so special for clients because I can send 20 clients to the one event and know that none of them are going to bump into each other and go, excuse me, you're wearing my hat. <laughs> I would be mortified if that ever happened to me. Where are you going? Is it overseas? Is it here? Is it a wedding? Especially if it's a wedding in Ireland or England, you know, and there might be an American client. I really have to help them and get really hands-on because they're, they're going to a country where hats are a major part of the culture. If I feel I'm getting a response that's positive and they love what they're seeing, then I go, here's three options that I think would look great. I gather the, the colors and I put them together and sort of do a mock-up. 
it's a rough mock-up, but it'll give the customer a fair idea as to how those colors are going to translate and look with their outfit. And then they love it and I sign off on it and finish it and they take it with them. There are times that someone might choose something and it's a $600, $800 hat and I have something that's half of that cost, but looks better, and I'm like, no, 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 this is, this is the hat for you. I, I'm such a stickler about the perfect piece for the for perfect lady and it doesn't matter about what the price is. And they love it when they come back and they show me the pictures and that's like a wonderful moment for me to see the picture of them at the wedding and they got tons of compliments and they felt like a movie star, they get their 15 minutes of fame. I'm not happy if they're just 100%, I need 150% happiness for my client. Passion will drive you over the cliff <laughs> and it does some days. <laughs> But if you don't have that passion, it's not going to work.